name is Ryan. Um, Emily. And, and I'm, I'm from, from Cambridge, Ottawa, Ontario. Ontario. I am dating Ryan Owen Beckett. I am dating Emily Catherine Goss. We met four years ago at a Salvation Army Young Adults Conference. We got asked to go to a young adults retreat at Jackson's Point. Emily happened to be there. I was like, oh, she's, she's kind of attractive. <laughs> so... Met there. I, he remembers meeting me for the first time. I don't. I thought he was funny and I thought he was cute. Was. She was really good looking. And she was also very passionate about worship. Uh, well I guess that would technically be me. She asked me about my tattoo. So I just turned around in chapel one day and was like, Hey, what's your tattoo mean? Two years later, at Jackson's Point, we went to the Tim Hortons. First date was at a Tim Hortons at Jackson's Point. I'm gonna say no. Yes. It wasn't until like four years later or two years later that we actually started dating. Emily is uh, a girl that I pointed at and said, that is going to be my wife. Um, where to begin? <laughs> don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, I love them. I don't like this question. When we're arguing and he'll say like, it was just a joke or, uh, I was just joking. Drives me absolutely bonkers. She is very competitive and gets very defensive when we play games. He also likes to do this thing where I'm upset and he does it out of pure kindness and pure love. But he'll come and he'll like rub my arms when I'm upset. I hate it. It makes me feel like he's petting me and trying to like make me feel better. And I just, I, I hate it. And like plucking my eyebrows for some reason. I'm sure I have more. Oh my gosh, our first fight. We went to the driving range. I took her to try and teach her how to golf. And it was so annoying because for not hitting a golf ball at all, she hit it like, 50 yards, 70 yards, like she was hitting it off the tee. I think our first fight was when he was still living in Cambridge and I had a car and he didn't. And so I was the one driving down to Cambridge and he was taking the train, but the train was expensive so he couldn't come down all the time. So I kept driving down. But she started crying because she thought she wasn't good enough and she wasn't doing a good job. I can't come anymore. I don't know if I can come. I want to say me. I think I'm funnier than him, but he's pretty funny. Emily thinks she's really funny, but I would say I'm the funniest. Sometimes, not all the time. Funnier, I'm funnier more often. And he's really funny less often. I just think I'm funny. I wear the pants in the relationship, regardless of what Emily says. Who wears the pants in the relationship? Me. I do. 1000%. I wear the pants in the relationship. <laughs> but there are times where Emily is very, very strongly opinion on what we do. I think, like, I would say yes, I do, but I think Emily will say that she does, so. I hope you have the best week. We're here, we're doing a youth service on YouTube. It's amazing and exciting. Believe it or not, in quarantine, we're pretty busy here at church. We even have some announcements in youth group. Coming up on June 5th, we have a youth overnighter. I bet you're wondering how we do an overnighter in a quarantine. I am. 
So for the most part, it's going to be on Zoom, but we're also going to be delivering care packages. We're going to do, be doing Netflix parties. We're going to do video game tournaments. We're also going to do crazy challenges and rewards. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait to see you there. This event actually does require a permission form. We need your parents to sign, sign it in order to get you a care package delivered to your house. It's like we never left. I bet you're in quarantine. You've already had a couple all-nighters. I know I have. I've been playing COD all night long with my buddies. So I'm sure you can show up and just do these amazing challenges we're going to do, rewards, freaking games, it's going to be such a great time. Show up. Yes. Next up, I'm announcing a random pizza party. We have an honoring culture here at the Salvation Army. We believe that it's important to honor people. So if any of you guys know someone who just goes over and beyond is kindness, loving, each loving other people, um, encouraging other people, always spreading positivity, just tag us, let us know, DM us, and we'll send that family or person a pizza. Every Friday for the next three weeks, our youth group is going to be sending a pizza to somebody. Coming up on the 29th, we have a gender split night. So our Youth Connect is going to be a gender split, so we're going to do a guy Zoom and a girl Zoom. Thank you for tuning in to the youth service. We hope you guys are all doing well. Make sure to come to Friday Night Connect and join our youth leaders and other youth group members and just have a great time with us, connect with us, talk, make new friends. It's going to be an amazing time every Friday night. I guarantee it. We get the job done, and I hope to see you there. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. Peace. What's up, youth? It is so good to see you again on YouTube. If you've never been a youth before, welcome. We are so excited that you're here tuning in with us today. When we aren't in quarantine, we usually meet at this church every Friday night from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. We play games, we do worship, we got Bible chats, we do all, all the good stuff, all the catching up. It's a load of fun. So because of quarantine, because we can't really meet in this space, we've been doing Connect on Zoom on Friday night, so we've just kind of started that. Um, and so that'll be every Friday night from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. This is a fun way for us to catch up, see each other's faces, and meet each other's pets. It's a good time. So if you wanna join Youth Connect, the best way to reach us is to send us a DM on Instagram. We will link our Instagram account below. We love, love, love when new students join our Zoom calls. It is the best. We are so excited to just meet you, get to know you, and it's just a fun time. Why not? Try something new. I am super excited to talk to you about Jesus today. We're gonna have so much fun. So I'm gonna pray really quick and then we're gonna get into it. Jesus, we wanna hear from you today. We pray that you would speak to us, that um, we would open our eyes and our ears to hear what you have to say, God. Uh, we pray that you would teach us more about you, that we would leave this conversation feeling refreshed and nourished in our soul. God, meet with the students who are on the other side of the screen. God, you're powerful enough, you're big enough, you know them by name, you love them, and you have planned for this message to reach them at this particular moment in time. So God, we play, pray a blessing over it. We love you, and help us to have an amazing week. Amen. So I have a question for you. It's question of the week, are you ready? Have you ever been in the presence of a celebrity before? Well, I have. It was VU Conference 2018. It was my first time in Miami and I was with my mom. So she's a pastor of the Salvation Army Church. And so we were invited to this like leadership lunch to kind of kick off the conference. And so we got to the venue, it was in a hotel, it was beautiful. And we got ushered to our seats. And then as we're bowing our heads to say grace, Justin Bieber is caught in my direct line of you. Now, I don't know how you'd react uh, seeing Justin Bieber like that, but I kind of lost my mind. Like it didn't matter who talked to me, who, anything. It didn't matter after I saw Justin Bieber. My mind was like, gone. And so the second the lunch was over, I booked it over to his table and I got to be about two feet away from him, but then it came over me. I got so scared. I was shaking and sweating. I didn't even know what to do with myself. I was just like vibrating, like, you know, you know that feeling? I couldn't even say hi. I couldn't even form words. I was just like, uh -huh. And so for the sake of this story, I did get that dream moment. The unthinkable thing happened. I followed him out to the parking lot like a crazy person does. 
I kind of caught up to him again and he turned around and as I'm pulling my phone out to take a video of him, he says, hey, I like that thing you're wearing. And I said, thank you. And then he got in his car and drove away. And you see, Justin Bieber, he's just a regular person. But his fame, his incredibly handsome good looks, and his power made me feel afraid of him. I was on edge because I knew that this wasn't just anybody standing in front of me. It's funny that a similar situation happens in the Bible when people encounter God's presence. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden felt the same way. When they sinned, they ran and hid from God because they were afraid of him. And God's presence really fascinates me, especially over the last couple weeks. And so in my life, I know that I've encountered God in ways that have completely brought me to tears. Other times, I've laughed full of joy. Other times, God has completely just like stilled my body in peace. And yet, just like Adam and Eve, I've also wanted to run and hide from the presence of God because of my sin. And so what is it about God? Is his presence safe or no? Should we be scared of him? So that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today, God's presence. And so the first point of this message is that God wants us to fear him. Is that crazy? He actually wants us to fear him. Psalm 47.2 says, For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. You do not have to be a scholar to know that some of the godly encounters recorded in the Bible could be included in a horror film. There's some scary stuff in there, okay? I mean, let's think about it for a second. There was uh, that flood that wiped out all humans on earth except for one family in a boat, where there was a chamber of fire that the Christians went in. Uh, there was another time where a big fish whale thing swallowed someone for a couple days and then spat them out again. Like, the Bible would definitely be rated R if that's how we measured books. It's a mature read, that's all I'm saying. In fact, I remember reading the Bible in high school and kind of being confused because I wasn't in a Bible study and I wasn't really studying the Bible. I was just reading it for what it was on the page. But I remember being a teenager and reading this book thinking like, eh, God, sometimes you're a little bit scary. And so we have to remember that God is both massive and mighty. He's above all creation. Our universe, our whole cosmos is literally like a little dandelion to God. And so because of his holiness, his righteousness, his power, we are to fear him out of reverence, which means great respect. And so something really cool happens in 1 Kings. This guy Solomon, he's the king of the time, and he's building a temple for the Lord. And so they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the temple, which is basically a fancy box with the tablets that Moses wrote with the Ten Commandments on them. And so when the Ark of the Covenant was brought in, a huge cloud filled the temple. Pretty cool. And scripture says in verse 8, 11, the priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests had to literally stop the work they were doing because of God's powerful presence. And this isn't because God like forced discomfort on them. It's not because he wanted them out of the temple. But simply the priests could not be comfortable sensing the difference between sinfulness and the holiness of God. And so God does not want us to be scared of him. He wants us to have God-fearing hearts that come from a place of humility and deep respect. It's kind of like being a kid growing up with your parents. Now, my mom and dad are awesome, but I'm a firstborn child, so I didn't really get away with much as a kid. Are there any other firstborns out there? Yeah. But fearing my parents kept me from making the wrong choices. Part of this was because I feared the consequences they were going to give me, but also because I loved and respected them and the boundaries they made for me were to keep me safe. Do you know that feeling that you get inside of you when you're like, if I do that, my mom is literally going to kill me. It's not even an option. I will, I, I'll die. I just, I can't, no. And so I don't know if you saw this on Instagram, but Kylie Jenner posted this adorable little video of Stormy and she was doing the toddler challenge. And so basically you put some candy or something that the kid wants in front of them and then you record it and then you leave the room to see what they do. And it was adorable to watch little Stormy just sit there patiently. And as Kylie left the room to go to the bathroom, we just watched as she sat there and she like stared at the candy for a little bit 
And then she starts going, patience, patience, patience. It was the cutest thing ever. And so even as a toddler, we understand the fear of parents, the fear of consequence, the fear of deep respect. And so for me, the fear of my parents kept me from doing drugs, kept me from drinking because I trusted them with the boundaries they had given me to keep me safe. We fear God like we fear parents. We show him our greatest respect. And so this is an awesome verse in Isaiah. Verses 66 2 says this, My hands have made both heaven and earth. They and everything in them are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will bless those who have humble hearts, who tremble at my word. And so that verse tells us that God blesses people who live with humility, with sensitive hearts towards him. Do you guys have maybe that one person at your church or at the conference or, you know, in youth group who just cries every worship song or like feels the spirit so like tears, you know? Maybe you're that person, that's totally okay, I'm that person too. And it doesn't really matter how old you get or, or mature in your faith or how many years you've been a Christian, I personally never wanna stop crying in worship moments with God. And for those who maybe don't know what I'm talking about, they're happy tears, they're joyful tears. They're like, wow God, you are amazing tears. And so for the rest of my life, I wanna keep living in amazement of God. And so that brings us to point number two. God's presence is good. Why is God's presence good? Because he loves us. Just like we fear a good parent, we also feel safe with them. And we know that our parents love us because they give us boundaries. And God, he loves us so much that he gave us this book called the Bible, full of instructions of how to live life the absolute best way we can. And in this book, God shows us how to live life the way he designed it to be. His love is the reason for everything. He is God. He knows what's going to bring us hurt and what's going to bring us nourishment. And so we have to understand first and foremost that God is good from every aspect. Every speck of God is good. God's so good, he takes the role of a fierce protector over us. So much so that when we were in trouble, he sent his son Jesus to come and save us. God has proven himself to be faithful. You actually haven't lived a single day of your life that you haven't been on God's mind. God's presence is so important that we see it, that we recognize it in order to go through the changes in life. And so you might wonder, how do Christians believe in a God they can't see? They sit in his presence. And so I know for me personally, whenever I got back from Australia, I was adjusting for the first couple of weeks because I was away at Bible college. And I got to this point where I felt like a little ache inside. I was just feeling like, ow, like I'm aching. And so life was really busy at the time and I kind of came to this realization that I was aching for the presence of God. And I kind of had to realize like, it's not my Bible college's responsibility to make sure that I encounter God. It's not change conference responsibility. It's not youth group's responsibility. It's not even church's responsibility, it's mine. And so I had to stop and say, God, I'm sorry that I haven't been trying to sit in your presence. I'm sorry that I've been too busy. And so I actually had to have a conversation with God and say, I'm sorry that I have not made time to sit in your presence. I'm sorry that I forgot how much I desperately need you. And so what I did was I turned all the lights off in my room in the dark and I lit a candle and then I played worship music and I just sat and I talked to God and I let him come and fill me up. And so that's a tip for you. Maybe in quarantine, you're struggling to spend time with God. You're struggling to sit in his presence. So I would suggest Get alone with him, get quiet, ask him to come speak to you. See what happens, you never know. Tip of the day. And so one of my favorite songs right now is Promises by Maverick City. Oh my gosh, guys, they are amazing. In fact, I'll link it below. You can have a listen to this song, it's amazing. And the lyrics of this song are so beautiful. I wanted to read them to you. It says, I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground my hope and my firm foundation. He will never let me down. Fearing God is an important part of our relationship with him. But while he commands our respect, he also promises to relieve our fears. The opposite of fear is calmness. We can feel God's protective nature over us. It's so amazing. We can have these divine encounters with God where we walk away and we were like, 
wow, that was God. That was something I prayed for. That was a moment in worship where God was right there with me. And it's almost like that electric feeling that goes through your body when you encounter a celebrity. And so we all know who the celebrity is of the New Testament. It's Jesus. That's right, Jesus was the celebrity of the New Testament, of the whole Bible, really. He had crowds all around him all the time. Jesus was the guy who went into the darkest of situations. He went to the grave, the sick, the poor, the needy, and his presence brought transformative life. Why? Because he's God's son. And so the most common, I just spat. The most common Hebrew term for presence is penim, which is also translated to face, which basically means that when we encounter God's presence, it's close and intimate, as if we are spiritually face to face. And so it's important to remember that when we pray to God, he's not struggling to hear us. The one who made you catches every single word you speak to him. And so I love to say this prayer throughout my week. It's been really helpful for me, so I'm gonna share it with you. And so it just says, God, hold my face if I should wander. If my thoughts are far from home, if my faith is going under, remind me that I am known by you. And that's been a beautiful prayer for me to keep close to my heart. Um, it was written by a worship leader at Bethel. And so hear me loud and clear, there is nothing in this universe that can keep us from the love of God. He's after us, that's all there is to it. He will not stop knocking on the door of your heart. Our destiny and our purpose is to live in heaven with him forever. And so before Adam and Eve had ever even sinned, God had his rescue mission in mind. We couldn't get to God, so God came to us. His son Jesus, fully man and fully God, lived a perfect life and then died paying for our sins. And so I'm gonna close on this. I just wanna leave you with this piece of scripture. And so I pray that it's one that you write down and that you cling to. Uh, and it's Psalm 139, seven to 12. It says this, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for the darkness is as light to you. Isn't that so beautiful? Nothing can keep us from the presence of God. And so three things that you should remember about the presence of God. God should be feared. God's presence is good, and God is madly in love with you. So that's all for today, fam. We love you, we miss you so much. Stay tuned for updates. Uh, follow us on Instagram, that's the best way to know every single event that's happening. Let us know in the comments what stood out to you about this message, and let us know if you've ever encountered a celebrity. We love you, see you next week. Bye!